Hi class, tonight your video boost is going to be about meta direction. So I'm going to just start with a benzene ring that has a, a clearly electron withdrawing group on it and talk about how that affects the outcome of the reaction. This will complement what we're doing in class and also the video boost we did last night that involved an electron donating group. Okay. As I said in class, the typical electron withdrawing group has a delta plus or a full plus charge on the atom adjacent to the aromatic ring. So as an example, I'm going to use the um, nitrate group, which is a very strong electron withdrawing group. So supposing I have this group and I want to sulfonate this aromatic ring that already possesses a nitro group. To sulfonate, as you will recall from class, you need SO3 and sulfuric acid. This is what is called fuming sulfuric acid. Okay, so what we want to consider are different modes of attack. This is a meta director and a D activator. Generally, what that means to be a D activator is that the group attacked, attached is actually pulling density out of the ring, making the ring less electron rich and less attractive to electrophiles such as SO3. The way you recognize an electron withdrawing group is the atom attached to the carbon has no lone pairs on it and it is, it is either a plus charge or a delta plus charge as we have here. We have a plus charge. This is a bookkeeping charge but remember O is more electronegative than N. So the electron density is being pulled out of the ring. So this ring is not as reactive as benzene. It's less reactive than benzene. All right, well, how does this reaction work? Let's first show the preferred, or as we like to say, the lesser of two evils, meta attack. So what does meta attack look like? I've got one NO2 group here. I would take, kind of freeze out my benzene, uh, my uh, aromatic bonds, draw the sulfur trioxide, attack, meta, remember you have to break the pi bond. The result of this meta attack. It's all about the placement of the sulfonate group is such that there's a plus charge here, double bond here, double bond here. If you draw the resonance forms, there are three resonance forms. I'm going to draw them all here because I'm getting an SO3 minus here. This will ultimately pick up a proton. Um, you would have this and finally in your resonance form you would have this. Oh, I'm going backwards. You would have this. Okay, now, there is an extra H at each of these locations. And what you can see here is that the plus is missing the site bearing the NO2. That's actually a good thing. Now, if you guys were going to draw a hybrid, which you like to do, most of you are very good at drawing hybrids, you would draw your hybrid like this. Oops, wrong group. This should be an SO3 minus. Again, we're going to eventually put a proton on there, or you could eventually put one on. Your hybrid would look like this. You'd have a delta plus there, delta plus there, delta plus there. So what you want to think about is why is this advantageous for the charge to never land at the site with the electron withdrawing group? It's because this group pulls density off, 
and it would destabilize a positive charge at that location. This reaction is finished by just by pulling this proton off. So I could protonate this end with sulfuric acid. We did this in class. You could protonate that. And of course you can deprotonate. I'm being a little abbreviated here. This end to re-aromatize it. Okay, but the important thing here, if you attack meta, plus charge here, here, and here, and it skips the spot where it would destabilize it. Okay, let's consider, and again, this was the meta attack. Let's consider ortho or para. I don't have time tonight to do both. So what we will do tonight is the preferred para, because generally speaking, para is preferred. But realize that Ortho para is electronically the same. Um, the para is slightly favored over the ortho because of steric effects. But in this case, again, this kind of group is a meta deactivator. So what I'm doing here is what you're not supposed to do. So to demonstrate the ortho para, I'm just going to show the para. If you do the ortho on your own, you will get the same results. So I'm going to do the power attack with self SO3. I'm going to do this a little more abbreviated since you've seen it once. This is going to pick up a proton from sulfuric acid, which is in the solution. So I'm going to attack para, I'm doing that kind of in one fell swoop. The result will be the following resonance forms, which we really want to consider very carefully. What's my time? Seven minutes. Okay, I'm almost done. Minutes. I'm almost done. Okay, so I get a plus here. Okay, we can draw other resonance forms. Let's draw them. Now look at this. This is bad. The plus charge is sitting at the site where the electron withdrawing group is sitting. This will also happen with the ortho. Finally, I can delocalize and draw one more form, which looks like this. NO2. Okay, so what's happened here? We've got plus charge there, plus charge at the site bearing the charge. So if you compare these ortho and para, which are going to come out the same, to the meta that I just drew, which is the preferred, the meta avoids that plus spot. There are three resonance forms in each case, but this resonance hybrid, which would look like this. Eight and a half. This resonance hybrid, which would look like this. as you guys would draw it, would look like this, delta plus, delta plus, delta plus. And what you want to do is compare that intermediate to the intermediate we got for the meta. The intermediate, when we have an electron withdrawing group, the intermediate for the meta is kind of like the lesser of two evils because it avoids that spot. And what we're saying, therefore, is that intermediate is lower in energy. And what we're saying is that intermediate is a good model for the transition state and, we, and what, then what we're saying is that it is formed faster. Okay, so compare that to what we did last night. Thank you. I'll see you in class tomorrow.